Um, I'm one of the co managers here at Social Media Breakfast, and we just want to welcome you to uh, another Social Media Breakfast uh, this month, March 2013. Um, yeah, let's hit it up. Mascot. <laughs> So yeah, um, who are we? Well, we're here to educate um, about social media. So bring, uh, today we have a panel, great guests, and often we have a presenter who bring, brings uh, best case uh, practices and go from there. And networking, we just want to bring anyone in Madison who's excited about social media, whether it's a PR or professional. We have students here. Anyone who's enthusiastic, just bring them together, and the more we come together, the more we learn. So when we meet, well, every third Wednesday morning, 7.30, so remember that, that's when we are. We are somewhere in the city, a new location often. Um, you have uh, ideas for us in any way, shape, or form, location ideas, speaker ideas, if you want to contribute to a committee, um, just speak to one of our co-managers, and here they are. Uh, start at the top there, Lance. Lance is one of the guys in charge of sponsorship. Uh, Lance is the uh, owner of Yo's Cafe out, out west, on the west side. He is not here with us today. Uh, Renee Rip, well, we thank Renee for getting everyone in the room today. She uh, uh, runs the Eventbrite and the uh, check-in. Renee is also the uh, owner of Hummingbird Social Media, which specializes in assisting those in assisted living with their social media needs. Um, next up, Tony. We're happy to have Tony back. Last month was the first social media breakfast he'd missed in, I don't know, three years. Um, uh, Tony's our leader. He, everything goes through Tony. Um, he is in charge, and so talk to him. Because <laughs> I do about everything. Can I do this, Tony? Yes, go ahead. Um, Annie, Annie. So really, you don't need to be here because Annie writes a blog that uh, informs us on every single thing that happens. So, but if you ever miss one, her blogs are amazing and very informative. There are links to the slides on the blog, links to the video on the blog. Um, excellent blog. Annie's over here. Annie's also a social media manager at Madison College. Paul Stokes, who's usually our AV guy, he's not here today. Um, he's also our treasurer. And uh, Paul is uh, one of the managers of Graphite, uh, your local Apple store. Um, let's see, Mike Walsh. Hi, nice to meet you again. I help run the Twitter and the Facebook page for Social Media Breakfast. And also locally, I social media consult for Wisconsin Athletics. Bob Weider, everyone wave to Bob. Where's Bob? Bob? Over here. Thank you for coming, Bob. Very good. Bob is uh, our amazing photographer. Yeah, he, uh, he's also our vice president, and he works for Data Direct locally. And his uh, pictures are pretty amazing. And uh, they will—you can find them on our Facebook page in the next few days. See the link to that. Coming up, we have a list of lots of good stuff. We've been working hard to bring these, bring this list together. Um, next month. We have Chad Whitman, the CEO of EdgeRank Checker, coming. Um, and for those that don't know, EdgeRank is what Facebook calls their algorithm for their news feed. And so this guy, Chad, and his company, he has looked at over 500,000 Facebook pages to understand the algorithm and how stuff gets into certain people's news feeds. So this will be really exciting to come next month and understand how Facebook works and how to get things and news feeds you know, for your company, how, how to not only create good content, but get it out there and engaging and so forth. And following that, we, uh, we leave Madison. We go out to some Prairie to Wisconsin distributors and we talk beer. Um, early morning. Uh, Maybe take that day off. Um, Story First Media is coming up in June. Um, see, and then so forth, we got Power, we got Hebe, and AT&T coming up in September, and August is still to be determined. And maybe even more. 
the end, so I can be And grass. Yeah. <laughs> so, the next slide. Our hashtag today is S and B mad. <laughs> okay, well, I'd like to thank some people. Um, I know this. I'd like to thank Krista. Sorry. You want to go with that? All right. So that's our website, smbmag.org. If you can remember smbmag, you can find us anywhere and everywhere online. Um, and Facebook. And we'll be switching that name soon. Twitter. And SlideShare, we try to post as many of our uh, slides as we can from the guests that they give them to us. Usually they do. On SlideShare, you can always go back and check things out. And LinkedIn and YouTube, it'll be on, this will be on YouTube. Hi, YouTube. You'll see me saying this later. Um, and Geek Scene is in charge of that. You'll hear from him. And if you are not on our on our email list and you want to get notices of when, when the next events are, um, be sure to email us. We'll put you on that list. Right, yes, social media and healthcare is today's presentation. Brought to you by a couple sponsors. I mean, twelve. Um, <laughs> if you are a representative of one of these guys, uh, you can come up here and speak for a minute. And uh, oh yeah, Hillel. Thank you, Hillel. UW Hillel. Yeah. It's a great space. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to the March 2013 Social Media Breakfast. Um, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Jeremy Dichter. I'm the marketing and events coordinator here. Um, just give a quick thank you to Tony Rodriguez and the rest of the social media breakfast team for organizing what I'm sure will be a very successful and enlightening uh, social media breakfast program this morning. So thank you very much. Um, and if you love our building, let me know. Uh, we'd love to help you host uh, your next corporate or social event. We have a pretty unique space here. We offer full on-site, full service on-site catering. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at the building, come grab me after, and uh, I'd love to give you a tour. I won't be that hard to find. I'm going to with the Amazon. So, uh, good morning. Thank you so much for coming. Hi there, I'm Tom Cox with Charter Business. Just want to thank you all for coming again and uh, you know entering the drawing here, like I like to do at the beginning of every event. There's no strings attached. Just like to give away free money. Uh, and I'll just let one of these lovely ladies here pick somebody out. I I've watched them already, so all right. Stacy Reinhardt. All right, come see me afterwards. I'll get this over to you. So. Um, again, with Charter Business, I'm a sales manager for Southern Wisconsin. We offer the fastest internet speeds around. No question about that. So you can do your what we're tweeting and, and search the search Facebook as fast as you possibly want. So uh, if you guys have any questions on that, come see me. I also have one of my reps here, Tom Klaus, hiding somewhere in the background there too. So easy to answer. Remember Tom and Tom. So again, thanks everybody for coming and thanks for letting Charter Business be a part of this event. get to grab some stuff on the table on the way out. We really don't want to carry it. So and we can't buy more stuff unless you guys take it all. Oh. <laughs> Is that it? Anybody else want it? <laughs> Jeffrey. Hi, I'm Patty Stempensky with Subtle Strauss. Um, welcome. Um, thank you for your business. Um, Subtle Strauss offers end-to-end -end marketing, communication solutions, and um, everything from print to technology solutions. So we're really pleased to be a sponsor of Social Media Breakfast. Um, and I'm trying to unthaw from the lot. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Jeffrey Powers, I'm with Geekazine.com, I do all the video here for uh, Social Media Breakfast, and uh, you can find me over at Geekazine, a lot of different shows, 
if you guys uh, have businesses you want to do one-on-one -on -one interviews let me know and we can work something out faces here. I've been with Social Media Breakfast uh, Madison for almost as long as Tony, but a few trips around the month. But uh, new faces always get me so excited because I know that, that uh, we're all having a reach and making a difference. I'm a photographer. I know the social spaces. So if you need somebody that can capture that moment exactly at the time that needs to be captured, every once in a while I'll hit the mark. So thanks for coming. Thank you, sponsors. This is what makes it happen. So, let's find some of those other slides. Oh, there we go. Uh, thank you, Greg Monday from Reinhardt Law. Um, Greg is helping us become a 501c3 that makes everything much easier. Um, we just started out with a small little group. Uh, gosh, two of us, I don't know, 10 of us, and two, two of us three years ago. So, it's great to see it grow. Um, thank you, Blue Pizza. Pretty good breakfast, right, everyone? Yeah. Thank you, Food Bud, as well. They've been a great help. Thank you, Carrie, for all your work with LinkedIn and checking in. And thank you, Krista. Krista is doing the Twitter this morning for SMB Matt. Um, thank you. And our hashtag today is any guesses? SMB Matt. All right, let's get started. Our presenters today, um, starting right off with Catherine Showers, thank you. Uh, we asked her about 4 o'clock yesterday, and she accepted at 4.02. <laughs> I don't know what she was doing for those two minutes, but. <laughs> um, thank you, Trish Graham from Mercy Health System. Hi. Sue Spade from Jigsaw. And finally, Jennifer Walker from UW Health. And without further ado, uh, from the American College of Healthcare Executives, present Social Media and Healthcare. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Here we go. Yay! I get to go first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So um, what I was saying, um, St. Mary's turned 100 years old last year. That's a really kind of a fun thing, and um, I really just love this photo. We have it blown up in um, our atrium right now with that 100. That's 250-ish staff members on a 100-degree day wearing red T-shirts, standing in our garden, straddling. You know, we had executives straddling bushes, and like we had a helicopter coming overhead. It was fantastic. Um, so. Uh, my point in showing you this is the photo on the right <coughs> is our current cover image and that was taken exactly one year ago today on the first day of spring. So I just wanted to, you know, rub that in again. <laughs> um, so Facebook, I mean, Facebook is where we get most of our patient interaction. Um, we actually, uh, we have about 3,200 fans and the majority of them are our employees. Um, the other reason that I'm showing you that 100 photo is in this left corner here. Um, that's a, an employee recognition dinner, and we've found that when we do visuals, we do photos, and if they're photos of our staff, they really like that. They like to see themselves. They like to point out, hey, there's Rita, way to go. Uh, so we get a lot of our engagement through staff, photos of staff, people doing fun things around the hospital, and that's, that's um, probably one of our areas of largest engagement. Um, one of our recent stories that's had the best um, <clears throat> interaction was a nurse of ours got a call from, a, she's a nurse in family care suites, and she got a call from her sister, hey, I think I'm in labor, my husband just went and took the kids over to my sister, you know, to a family member's house, can you come over, like, I think I might need to go to the hospital, and when our, our, our nurse arrived at her sister's house, the baby was coming out. And so she delivered her sister's baby at home, and we had this nice photo, and you know, did this nice story with them. But people just 
love that story. So our staff doing cool things, being you know active around the hospital, really gets a, a great um, feedback from from our fans. Um, so yeah, there's the first day of spring, everybody. <laughs> um, we're also on Google Plus. I just threw that up there. Um, as you probably know, if you're in the Google Plus space, they've changed their their image, uh, that top image recently. And I I personally get would hate me for saying this but I get so frustrated with Google because um, you'll see, so we have this great photo it's a wonderful photo of our exterior the Google um, the local if you guys have noticed on the left that's another thing I wanted to point out like you have your local listings um, we just have the hardest time at the hospital with having so many duplicate listings um, so it's just something to keep an eye on is how your your local listings are showing up in Google what are they saying how are they mapping things um, I've claimed over a hundred listings in Google of incorrect phone numbers, doctor's phone number, like a doctor's name with a phone number in lab, and it maps the two together and it shows up in the local listings and it's driving me crazy. But I um, just wanted to point out, you know, if you if you haven't had a chance, go in and see how you're being displayed in your in your local listings in Google. But um, so yes, we do have Google Plus. Um, the other thing that's kind of neat for us with Google Plus. Um, our hospital, St. Mary's, and our parent organization, SSM, they do block social media from our employees at the hospital. They don't block Google Plus. So, <laughs> when we have some of those neat events and we have those photo albums, um, we often share them, you know, send out an email to staff and give them a link to the photos and we'll post them out through our Google Plus page and send it out to staff that way. So I just want to highlight that. Um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is something that I've recently kind of started dipping our toe in. Um, as a digital marketing coordinator, I've put in a cover image and put in our history. And then there's actually, if, if you spend any time in there, there's a products page where you can put in a, a thumbnail of our Dean and St. Mary's Cardiac Center and a description, a thumbnail of our Family Birth Center and some descriptions. So I've been working over time and kind of building out this product so that people who come to our page um, can learn a little, little bit more about our service lines. Um, the other thing that I've been working with with LinkedIn is um, with our HR department. So we use a recruitment tool called Taleo, and in Taleo, it's so slick, you can just go and click, hey, post to LinkedIn, and you can post your jobs that way. So I went and met with our HR generalists, we opened up Taleo, we talked about how can I get that job listing out on that LinkedIn page, and it turns out it's just a click. So um, we've been able to take some of our foundation jobs and some of our more management level positions and get them out that way for recruitment. Um, we have a patient blog going right now. This is a really neat story. There's a woman um, who's been with Dean and St. Mary's for um, many, many years. She had cancer as a, as a teen and beat that cancer, but from 19 to, I believe she's 47 now, she's had a lot of different life challenges. And through all of them, she's been resilient with a positive attitude. And we, we approached her and said, hey, would you be interested in telling your story? So uh, that's her. Her name is Kathy. Kathy had a pretty complicated heart procedure uh, about a week and a half ago. And she's home, and she's resting, and she's doing really well. So she's um, kind of taken on a project of writing some blog posts, and we're doing our best to help her tell her story. She's got a lot of really um, great stories to tell um, from 19 to 47 and kind of everything that's happened in between and um, it's a great story of resilience so um, we do use the patient blogs we've had a lot of really nice comments too we've had comments from her family members but also our staff just encouraging her to keep going it's a long road a cardiac procedure alone um, you know a lot of rehab and a lot of work but she's getting a lot of encouragement through this channel um, and we're happy to offer it to her um, here we go Okay, um, I had mentioned at the beginning when I was talking about Facebook that we celebrated a 100 year centennial, um, September 23rd, 2012. And one thing that we did is um, with Steve Van Dinter's help, we started um, an NFC, uh, I don't even know how to say, NFC enabled communication. Let me show you the brochure. Okay, so NFC, what this is, we developed a brochure with a bunch of pieces of our content for um, interactive pieces that we could put around the hospital. So anywhere that you saw that, that square that says pieces of our past, if you had an NFC enabled device, you could just bump up against it and it would load your content. So we had clips of old videos, photos, stories of our sisters, stories of 
um, or nursing school. It could be, um, it, it was a variety of mediums, so video, photos, stories, um, and all around our hospital, I mean, they're still there. So if you see them, you can scan it. It's a QR code, but you can also, if you've got an NFC um, enabled phone, you can just bump it and it will load your content. Um, so that was something that we were really proud to be able to offer people. Um, I asked Steve the other day how many people actually, like, okay, that sounds great, but how many people actually used it? Um, we had about 150 during the during the centennial promotion time. So we're pretty excited. It's kind of, kind of a neat way to get a, a little different message out because we thought, you know, people come into the hospital, they're kind of hanging around, looking for something to do, and kind of looking around. We see a lot of people wandering around in our gardens, and kind of looking at stuff, and thought, hey, you know, little piece of information, we could put a little piece of our history out there. Uh, and then that's just a slightly larger, so those are the squares that you can see around the hospital still today. Um, there we go. Okay, so this is my last slide. Um, and I wanted to just, uh, we have a YouTube channel, um, but the program I wanted to feature was, we just recently did um, something called a fresh mob. So, okay, so we just did a fresh mob. And what I mean by fresh mob is March is National Dietitian's Month. And um, our dietitian manager, myself, our video producer, and Steve got together and said, how can we do something kind of fun, kind of cool? I mean, we're just three, four people. Uh, and we actually purchased the music for a song. Our video person took it home. Her 15-year-old daughter wrote lyrics to the song. We asked our hospital staff, can any of you sing? Because we can't, so can any of you sing? Come on in. We had auditions, we went to a studio, we recorded the song, um, and again, this is all around National Nutrition Month, so we recorded the healthy song, and then we recruited some dancers. Well, let, oh, wait, let me back up. Then we partnered with Metcalfs, which was awesome. Metcalfs <coughs> in Hilldale, they've got such a beautiful space with their produce and the lighting, and they have just this gorgeous display of products. And so they were very, very happy, very, very, involved in helping us put this together. So we had a song, we had some music, we recorded it, we came up with some dance moves. And then last Wednesday, uh, they actually played our song on their loudspeaker. And I, <laughs> I'm the, uh, the shopper in the video, but I had just flip cams attached to my cart. So we had five cameras, just flip cams, nothing, nothing spectacular, just flip cams, um, attached to my cart and people hiding all around and we recorded what we're calling our fresh mom. So, I just wanted to show that to you. We will all go on. Fruits and veggies keep us healthy. Nothing to do it, just decide to do it now. Walk, run, bike, play. Remember to eat five a day. Salads, broccoli, and our greens. Cut down fat. There's still time to get it right If you keep healthy snacks in sight So cut the salt and limit fat Use fresh fruit to substitute that Give your body what it needs Lean meats and green beans Get active, get out there, make changes, they start here Small steps go the distance Just five a day can make a difference So many ways to make a change It's easy if you don't delay So start your count to five today Tell your friends, tell your family Five a day is how to be healthy Match it with some exercise Your health will surely maximize So cut the salt and limit fat Use fresh fruits to substitute fat Give your body what it needs, lean meats and green beans. Just five a day can make a difference. Small steps can go the distance. Five a day.
be loading up my presentation. I'm Trish Scram. I work for Mercy Health System in Janesville, Wisconsin. I manage the social media and public relations efforts for all three markets. We are in Janesville, Wisconsin. We're also in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and also in Harvard, Illinois. We have three hospitals and 64 clinics. And so what I'm gonna share with you today, or what I was asked to share with you today is our content strategy for our social media sites, as well as our goals, and some of the tools that we use, as well as some of the limitations we have in social media being in healthcare. Goals of social, social media strategy for Mercy is to begin changing the mindset of underappreciation. Uh, in Janesville, we have somewhat of a, you know, we've been in Janesville for more than 100 years, so going from that small hospital owned by nuns to a fully integrated system has been a struggle for us over the course of many decades, so that's one of our strategies for social media. Emphasize the caring heart in the walls of Mercy. Focus on why Mercy does what it does, not, or sorry, excuse me, focus on why Mercy does what we do, not what we do. Build greater community involvement differentiate ourselves, as well as emphasize the importance of having specialized care close to home. So like I've mentioned before, we are in three different markets, so that also changes uh, given the perception in each community. Our social media objective for Rock County is to lead the community in modeling appreciation while differentiating ourselves from the competition and building our brand. We continue, continue, continue to build our brand. In Walworth County, we continue to promote the facility as the premier integrated health care provider in Walworth County. And in the yellow here is, is our perception out there right now. It's excellent community reputation and respect. So we just continue to build that and then we use our social media uh, strategy to do that. And in McHenry County, Illinois, we have a much smaller hospital there. It's a 20 bed. Uh, and we're serving a lot of individuals there. We continue to focus on the primary specialty care, physician practices, and immediate care centers. And we're just, you know, we're, we're just building our reputation. We continue to stretch further and further. So what tools are we using? We are essentially mostly on Facebook. Uh, we do have a Twitter account. Our Facebook accounts equal to about 25, and we are st starting to branch out more specialties. So, you guys can hear me though, fine, right? Yeah. So, our Facebook accounts probably equal to about 10,000 fans. I mean, we we're segmented. Like I said, we're very built on the market that we're in. So, we're focusing on Rock County differently. We're focusing on Walworth County differently. And we're also emphasizing on our specialty lines, plastic surgery, neurosurgery, trauma, level two care in Janesville. Those are, those are most of our strategies in, in Facebook. We're also on Twitter, like I said, we're on YouTube. We are delving into Pinterest, which is a new one. I'll touch on a little bit. LinkedIn. Um, we also have a blog that I'll, I'll get into a little bit later too that we're having a lot of fun with. And that too, we're segmenting in more the markets so that we can tailor to each group separately. This is our social media hub. It's called mercypulse.org. I'm very proud of this one because this is a main hub for all of it together in one cohesive piece. We have our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, our PR page, which is mostly all my press releases that I'm sending out to each, each market, our blog, and also our podcast, which is a new thing as well which we call Better Health in Seconds. So I highly suggest you check that out. It's, it's, it's a very cohesive way to kind of pull it all together in one because we are on all of those sites, all of us are. So it's a nice way to just kind of put it all together. Here's a couple snapshots of our Facebook account. The one here on the left is just for Mercy Hospital and Trauma Center. And then the one on the right here is our entire system together. So it's our systematic awards, credentials, that sort of thing. We're kind of piecing all of that together. It's a lot of awareness. We're posting a lot of event photos. We're not marketing. We're posting events, um, new babies at the hospital. Um, we're, we're trying to 
gather more engagement rather than the marketing push. And I think sometimes we get a little confused with that. It, can social media be used for those marketing efforts? <coughs> with Mercy, we're a little bit more second to non engaging and, and using those tools for service recovery as well so that people can reach out to us and feel comfortable doing that. our blog which we house on WordPress how many of you are in healthcare just so I know okay good group good group are you using blogs we use WordPress I from I'm not a web person so using WordPress to me is a savior because I can upload things fast it's easy to use and I can also monitor how well the posts are doing at the same time we have our general news feed, which you can see here at the top. Our categories, again, we're, we're marketing to all three different markets. Our patient stories, we also have an events section, which I'm updating daily. It's our major hub for events. A lot of people are using Facebook, and we eventually, we kind of, we wanted to start using that, but then we realized that this is just an easier way for us to get the information out there faster. Twitter, we use, I'm a little old fashioned when it comes to Twitter, I like to use just twitter.com. I also like to use the Twitter application on my phone. I do use Hootsuite to manage mostly monitoring, so I'm scheduling tweets, but I'm not using it for that most per se. I'm using it more to look at when people are checking into our hospital using Foursquare. So I can reach out to them and say, hey, how's your experience at Mercy? Is there anything I can help you with? So I'm using that every time I'm clocking in. I'm looking at what when people are signing in, how I can help them, and I'm also we're, we're also kind of switching that those gears and rolling those gears more into HR, which is something else that I'm not going to talk about today. But that's certainly something you should think about with your hospitals is using your HR rep representative staff for your social media accounts as well. And I also have a little snapshot of. Hootsuite's analytics, I love their analytics, and it's super easy to use. You can do a quick link, so you can get something real quick if you're going to a meeting, which I love with our VPs and executive council. I can say, okay, this is what we have for the last month. It's so easy to use. Is that the paid version of Hootsuite? It's not, it's a free version. Just as good. Just as good. So here's a screenshot of our mobile apps. Like I said, I'm managing the, the Facebook accounts as well. So using Facebook pages is an excellent, excellent resource for that. You can simultaneously just go in if I need to go into plastics and put in a special real quick, or we've got openings for esthetician services. I can quickly, on my phone, go to pages, and I can flip through all of them. I also have our Twitter application, which I use on my mobile device. I love that, that one. Like I said, I'm a little old fashioned with that. I like Hootsuite for the, for the phone, but I'd rather use it on my desktop. That's just a personal preference. Other tools that we're using. Google Analytics, of course. I live religiously for Google Alerts um, to find what blogs people are talking about Mercy on. In fact, I've used that for service recovery and it's, it's worked <coughs> over and over and over again because People are talking about your experiences at your hospital and you have no clue because they're not tagging you on your sites. But Google Alerts allows you to grab those keywords and you can go out and reach out to them right away, simultaneously within an hour that they're posting. And then Google Plus, we are using Google Plus, uh, but <laughs> I like Catherine. I'm not into it just yet. Our, our web guy is, is working really hard to get all of our locations on there and kind of getting those up to speed. Uh, I have to admit I haven't worked too much on Google+, Plus, but I will. Same with Pinterest. I think there's excellent opportunity there. Uh, but again, we, we have not delved into that one yet. E-newsletters. I just wanted to talk about this a little bit uh, quickly because this is our monthly e-newsletter that we have. We have about 2,800 subscribers right now it just started three months ago so we're really happy we're very proud of this the, the reason why I'm showing it to you is because this is a somewhat traditional piece that we're locking in our social media accounts with so if you look at health articles 
those are just links to our blog and it's creating half of our content our, our uh, traffic for that site Success and ROI, let's talk a little bit about this because I think people have different perceptions of what success in social media truly is. My first line here is it's, it's really not about the views and the impressions, it's more about the comments, the likes, and the engagement that you're generating on your sites. Are people coming to you and asking you questions about your services? If they have a concern, if they're super happy, whatever the case may be, are they using your social media accounts to reach out to you? If they're not, you may want to rethink your strategy, only because you don't want it to be one-way conversation, you want it to be two-way. And engagement, like I had mentioned with my, my first bullet, you know, asking questions on your social media accounts instead of just telling them you have an event. Make it more two-way conversational. And brand management, we're using it, like I mentioned earlier before, we're, we're really using that for brand ma management. It's not about marketing, it's more about engaging, finding what your patients like, what they don't like, how you can help them. And it's, for me, it's been an amazing opportunity for service recovery. Limitations in social media. I know all of you know about HIPAA. HIPAA certainly, keeps you from saying too much, and it kind of goes on the opposite spectrum as well, whether it's positive or negative. Our main goal is to protect our patient's privacy, so that is number one with everything. And of course, the lack of control. You, With social media, there's, there's folks who like to control Facebook and Twitter a little too much, um, whether you don't let people post on your page. That's something you should rethink too. I know for a lot of executives that scares the crap out of them. <laughs> but you really have to encourage them to, to have that open line, otherwise you're defeating the purpose entirely of what social media really is. Policy violations, this goes from the public side and it's also the employee side. Uh, I know we're seeing more and more of it with with employees wanting to talk about their work day and talk about their patient experiences. And it's a slippery slope because even if they're not saying the name of the patient, if they're identifying them in any specific way, that's a HIPAA violation. So that's something that we are truly looking deep, deeper and deeper into. And Google Analytics somewhat helps us with that, but that's why we want to get HR on board. We want them to monitor and have them help us a little bit more with the partner side, which is, we call our employees partners. And then public criticisms, of course, nobody wants to see, ah, my hospital or your hospital sucks. That's, that's not fun. Uh, but again, service recovery is the whole point of being on social media. You want them, I always encourage it because it's a way for me to get in there and say, hey, I, I hear you, I wanna make your experience better, what can we do for you? and then get them right on board with customer relations so we can keep them as a patient and make them a happy patient. There we go, and I'm done, that was my last slide. So feel free and reach out to me. I've got all my information here. If you have any questions, I'm glad to help anytime. I love this stuff. So, if you ever... Do you guys encourage your doctors to be on social media? Absolutely. However, <laughs> absolutely. I have to say however, because we do have physicians that are so eager to get involved. I have one physician right now who desperately wants a QR code on her business card. Desperately. She has no clue why. It's that shiny new toy in the, in the toy box. She just wants it. So, it's a lot of explaining how it works. You have to manage it. We can help you get started, but you have to manage it to, for it to be truly what it what it can be. So we do they're excited, uh, but we're we don't have many physicians who are doing it on their own every day. We're we're doing a lot of hand holding still. Am I supposed to take questions right now? Uh, wait till the end. Okay. 
Perfect. All right, I'll catch the torch. Hi, everybody. I'm Sue Spate. I'm from an agency in Milwaukee called Jigsaw. And first thing I have to say is we would never, ever be able to get this many people to a morning event in Milwaukee, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so I applaud you for your motivation. Um, fun with hashtags. We're here today to talk about healthcare social media. Some of you probably know PX as patient experience, and it, it warms my little heart to hear Trish talk about using social media for service recovery because a lot of healthcare systems don't understand that social can really play a much bigger role in their business than they're allowing it to play. And there are a lot of things that hold them back, and they're perfectly understandable, and healthcare has much bigger issues to deal with than social media right now. However, my belief, and hopefully some of your beliefs, is that social media applied properly and strategically can actually help with a lot of the problems that healthcare is facing. So I tested that belief with a few people who um, work with a lot of healthcare social media day to day just to make sure that I wasn't crazy and I was happy that they seemed to confirm that I wasn't. So I'm going to share some of those conversations with you today. Um, just by way of introduction, I did go to UW-Madison. I will let you decide what year you think I graduated, because I'm not going to tell you. I have spent the last 20 years in agencies all over the country, from Dallas to South Carolina, Minneapolis, New York, et cetera, and I landed back in Milwaukee about four years ago. I'm head of strategy at Jigsaw, so I'm going to talk probably more about strategery today than about um, the tools that we use, but I am going to share some of the um, biggest ideas I think that these three other healthcare systems have implemented that I think really shed some light on the bigger potential that social media has in healthcare. So this is the classic hype cycle of technology, technology adoption from Gartner Group, which you've probably seen. And if you ask five people in healthcare social media where they are with regard to this hype cycle, you'll probably get five different answers. Um, I've become more optimistic lately, and from the people that I'm talking to, I, I like to think that we're kind of on the upslope, um, not as disillusioned as, as we maybe once were, um, and I also just really like to say slope of enlightenment. <laughs> so I think that's where we are. If nothing else, I hope that some of these examples that I've gathered to share with you today um, create a little optimism, if not quite all the way to enlightenment. So as Trish said, there are an awful lot of barriers to social media adoption and spread thrown in health organization from HIPAA to just general risk aversion um, to uh, the Trish mentioned that social media is blocked and that's still the case in a lot of healthcare systems. They don't allow their employees on social media. They're starting to open up more. Um, and there's a big study I think that's going to be coming out from Mayo Clinic with organizations that have recently opened their social media to employees and very few of them have said that that has caused any actual problems. It's done more, more good than harm. So hopefully that study coming out will make people open up even more as we go forward. But a lot of barriers. I basically ran out of room so I didn't add them, the other ones. So. Again, bigger pills to swallow. There was recently a really pivotal article in Time Magazine about the cost structure in our healthcare system and how completely irrational it can be. So, you know, we've got to lower our costs. We've got to improve our outcomes. If you don't know what happened on March 23rd, 2010, those of you who don't work in healthcare, the Affordable Care Act changed everything, turned everything on its head in the healthcare industry. Healthcare systems everywhere are trying to figure out not how to use Facebook, but how to restructure their organization, how to put new systems in place to bring costs down and be accountable for the cost of care, improve outcomes with specific patient populations, and it's everyone's in a tizzy trying to figure that all out. So it's not terribly surprising that social media in this industry isn't living up to its potential, right? Bigger fish to fry. But again, I do really believe, and others who are way smarter than I am have concurred that social media, when used with this very clear strategic purpose throughout a healthcare organization, can help. 
not only improve patient experience, but potentially improve patient outcomes, result in better care, definitely can reduce the cost of care. If Dell computers can use social media to reduce the cost of support by letting computer users support other computer users, why can't healthcare apply that same model and let patients support other patients and reduce the cost of supporting those patients? Guess what they can, and some of them are starting to do that. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, I think we're behind on time, so I'm gonna gloss over some of these slides, just real top line, and you'll have the slides from Annie on the blog, and you can ask questions if there's stuff you're interested in talking more about. I really would recommend that anyone in a healthcare organization who's interested in how to spread social media throughout the organization check out the altimeter groups. Most recent report is called The Evolution of Social Business, Six Stages of Business Transformation, and it talks you through how businesses, whether in healthcare or another category, category typically adopt social media. And in my experience consulting with our healthcare clients, this is very, very typical of the path that healthcare systems take, um, or really most organizations take. They start with baby steps, and then they figure out how to use it for engagement of the type that these ladies are talking about. Then they start thinking about, okay, how can we use this in a bigger way? How can this help drive our business? And that's really what I'm talking about today, is being a social business. So I've seen three ways, and I'm sure there are more, but I'm just gonna share three examples today of ways that healthcare systems can use social media to improve their patient experience and start building an accountable care organization. And those are driving patients into the right care pathway, facilitating care for them, using them to supplement traditional support groups that they may have with patients, and do that in an online social media environment. And using a CRM system, a social CRM system, to really start going beyond the traditional social and Google Analytics, which are fantastic and absolutely necessary, but let's start talking about, okay, are these people becoming patients? And what's the lifetime value of that patient? Because ultimately, you know, long term, that's the ROI we're all trying to get to. So first example is Swedish Medical Center in Seattle. Um, Dana M. Lewis is the head of social media, digital media there. She started a Twitter chat on Sunday nights called, it's hashtag HCSM. And it's at eight o'clock on Sunday nights. If you have any interest whatsoever in healthcare social media on an ongoing basis, I highly, highly recommend that you start participating in her chat. She's extremely bright um, and really one of the, the forerunners in, in the area. So Dana's whole strategy at Swedish in Seattle is to use digital and social media to make care much more easily navigable for patients. So it's not sexy stuff. It's nothing that you're gonna see go viral. It's nothing that you're gonna go, oh my God, that's amazing, I'm gonna share it all my friends. But guess what, if you're in Seattle and you're looking for a cochlear implant, you're gonna find Swedish Health Center because Dana's got blogs and videos and Twitter chats on the topic and live streaming and every social tool that you can think of. So, it's a different way of thinking about social media than we would traditionally approach it in another consumer category. But for this category, it makes a ton of sense because it's all about being found when people need you, right? Day to day, if somebody's not sick, they don't necessarily, they're not thinking about a hospital system. But at that moment of truth, when they need something, you want to be the one that's there. So this has been a really great strategy to do that. Um, Dana's also been one of the most successful people at driving clinician participation in social media, which can be a real challenge for a lot of systems because doctors and other clinicians are not necessarily incentivized to participate. So they do fall into the shiny object syndrome of I want a QR code or they want to blog and then they blog for three days and they think my practice hasn't quadrupled yet, I don't want to blog anymore. <laughs> it happens, I've seen it happen. So. Dana has over 100 clinicians participating in a blog, which is a miracle in this category, I'm telling you, it's a miracle. 
Um, and she does that by making it just uber easy for people to participate. She, you know, no one clinician has to contribute very much content. So you know, I expect you, Dr. X, to write a blog once every two months and I need 500 words on this topic and just pretend that you're talking to a patient and write what you would tell that patient and send it to me. Boom, done, that's all they have to do. She curates it, she posts it, she manages it. It's, it's a great, great thing. So for her, again, it's all about the patient experience. What can we do to use social media to make it easier for patients to navigate care? Let's face it. Some of us are healthcare people, but we're all patients at one time or another in our life, and we all know how frustrating it can be to find the right care, to navigate the billing system. God forbid you should have to deal with an insurance company at any time in your life. What, so what can we do to make it easier, right? Think about that when you're developing your strategies. In terms of her results to date, she definitely has strong anecdotal evidence that um, service recovery is happening, patient experience is being improved. She can cite numerous examples of how that's happened. Um, and she's starting to look now at ways to measure how that's affecting contribution margin. Um, next example is University of Maryland Medical Center, which is the example of using um, traditional offline support groups in an online environment. They have been very, very brave and started support groups for their patients in the Facebook private group environment, which again, for most healthcare systems, as conservative and risk averse they are, that would be completely unheard of, because we all know Facebook and security don't go together, right? Not very well. So they're very good about communicating to these patients, but nothing on Facebook is private. If you go into this, you have the, you know, do not have any expectation that anything that you share about yourself is going to be private, because we can't guarantee that. But they've started these groups, and it's reducing their cost of supporting these patients with specific illnesses like uh, hepatitis C, digestive disorders, transplant groups. They are getting a ton of engagement in these groups, and they're measuring ROI just based on the fact that, again, it's helping patients. They don't necessarily have the numbers to say it's reduced our cost of care by X, but they can demonstrate that it's reducing the cost of care. So let's all start thinking about how we can apply that. Last is Inova Health in Washington, D.C., which is really um, one of the most able to demonstrate their actual quantitative ROI for healthcare social media. Um, they launched a big preventive health program in social media called Fit for 50. I think about a couple of years ago, using really every social tool in the book, um, both social tools on their own website for the program, tools for people to journal and manage their own nutrition and exercise and share that out, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all of the usual suspects. And they really believe that we do to be able to say that social media can help you become an accountable care organization. We do have to be able to demonstrate numerical ROI. And I agree with that because with the overall state of health care, that's the problem that has to be solved. So how can social health solve that? And these other numbers. Cutting to the chase, it's about a half a million dollars in additional patient revenue that they can demonstrate from this program. So basic advice or recommendations, um, solicited or not, I guess it's semi-solicited since you invited me to be here, so you have to listen to my advice now whether you like it or not. Um, know how social media ties to your business plan. A shocking number of businesses in that um, altimeter group study I referenced earlier, I think it's about 40% or something of businesses don't think that social media actually has a tie to their business plan. That's a problem. If you're out there on Facebook and Twitter and ooh, Pinterest and ooh, QR code and oh, look at that shiny thing over there and you don't know why you're there, please stop. <laughs> Don't do that anymore. Know why you're doing it. Um, have a vision, a longer term vision for how social media, whether you're in healthcare or in some other business, how it can start playing 
a larger role in driving the business of your organization. It's engagement, yes, it's fantastic, and it is the road to get where you're going, but know where you're going. Um, avoid that shiny object syndrome. And I think we all need to be optimistic, and we need to not be afraid to think big in social media. The, the level of baby step mentality in this category, in this healthcare category compared to what I see in other categories is, is shocking. It's been baby steps for like five, six years. <laughs> Let's move beyond that and start thinking bigger and start testing some things like some of these other systems are doing because social media at the end of the day really can have a larger impact on your business. <laughs> Thanks. talked a little bit about strategy and big picture and I'm going to talk about sort of day-to-day -day how we manage and resource social media at Unity Health Group. Um, this is not the solution for everybody. I just thought I would share how we do it in our big organization. So, um, I've been at Unity Health for about eight years uh, and I still don't think I understand Unity Health what it is. So I'm just going to walk through uh, we have a list of all our social media presences at uwhealth.org slash social. Um, okay, so this is the UW Health bubble diagram, we call it. UW Health is not actually a thing, it's a brand. It covers um, the University of Wisconsin Hospital and Clinics and the Medical Foundation, which is the doctor group, also the School of Medicine and Public Health, and all those other bubbles. All right. <laughs> So that's what we are. Um, being multiple groups, we sometimes have duplicate departments doing the same thing. So we may have like two HR departments. So if you come to work for UB Health, you'll either work for the hospital and clinics or the medical foundation. So sometimes there's duplicates. In some areas though, we're moving towards having a single um, unified source. So one of those areas is the area that I work in, which is marketing and public affairs. Um, I work on the eHealth web team, and we have a we are a centralized website, email marketing, and social media for the whole organization. Everything goes through our department. Um, this is just sort of our how we are structured in eHealth. We report to the VP of marketing. Um, we have some creative and editorial people. We have a web systems manager. We have a tech team on staff. Me, social media, and information architect. Okay, so these are all our presences. We're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google Plus. We're on Pinterest. Check us out on Pinterest, UW Health Kids. Um, we're on LinkedIn, and we also have a blog. Okay, so all that stuff is managed. Well, not all of it. But um, I manage the three main accounts. So I have UW Health, the brand, American Family Children's Hospital, or as we call it online, UW Health Kids, because American Family Children's Hospital is not fit in a Twitter handle. Um, so we use that uh, shortcut. And then uh, Carbo and Cancer Center, or at UW Carbo. I also manage two of the smaller accounts, our Transformations account, which is cosmetic surgery and skincare, and uh, medical directions, which is targeted at referring physicians. The school is managed by the person who manages the website for the school, so he does that as part of his position. So I do all the posting, monitoring, replying for those three main accounts. We use a tool called Sprout Social. If anybody's looking for a tool, check them out. They have a really good discount for nonprofits if you're a nonprofit. Um, they give you nice dashboards and um, you know, easy to print out reports and um, do searches. It's just a different layout. Like I don't like the way Google is everything in the column. So if you're not into the columns, try it. <laughs> I also do some Facebook ads and promoted posts. We're getting more into this, um, letting people know that we're on Facebook. I don't see 
ads as a way to us like push stuff on people. People are not going to like you to be helped because we have an ad out there, but they are going to be aware that we're on Facebook. They might not think to go to Facebook and look for you to be helped. But if we can provide something on Facebook that's useful to everybody and let people know about it through promoted posts, I think that's a good idea. Um, any kind of responses are coordinated through our marketing account managers or patient relations and resources. So we do service recovery that way if someone has complaints. Or if someone has a question and we need to get back to them, we'll coordinate that all through me. But the content and the things that we post come from everybody in the organization. So even though it's centralized posting and managing, I get ideas oops, sorry, from everywhere. And if you work at Unity Health and you want to promote something via social media, let me know, and we'd love to work with you. Um, we have marketing with clinic staff, we have a photographer who sends me stuff, we have a graphics team who make brochures and all kinds of things. Um, and we also have videographers on staff, so that helps to make cool videos and they're fun to post. The pros to this system is it improves efficiency since it all goes through me. Everyone can contribute, but they have a unified voice because it all goes through the single person. The cons are it's less spontaneous. I'm actually not in the big hospital building, so I don't get that day-to-day -day where all the activity happens, so I miss out on some of those opportunities. But we're working on trying to get that uh, more built in so that I have more you know, people telling me what's going on. And sometimes we are slow to respond. We're a big organization. Sometimes it takes a while to get an answer. And we don't want to just post something. We want to make sure it's the right answer. OK. So we also have several other accounts that are managed as a portion of a staff member's time. Um, they're more specialized. They have a really unique audience. So Dottie, the donor dot, she is our donor mascot. Um, orange dot, everybody got your dot. Uh, <laughs> medical and surgical weight management, med flight, they're rock stars if you were into helicopters. Um, Unity Health Careers, which is managed by our HR teams. Sports medicine, multi sport if you're into you know like triathlons and stuff. Uh, and then we're starting with a few of the private groups like you're talking about. So one of them being. Um, Pediatric Hematology, Oncology, and Bone Marrow Transplant, which also was like really, really long. So the pros in managing it this way, having a clinician or a staff member manage it, is that it's directly from the source, so we don't have to go through anyone to get anything on it. They're able to respond quickly. Then they have unique personalities and perspectives. So Dottie, you can see she's bubbly and cute and not necessarily due to be a health brand official. Um, cons are they don't always have time to post regularly because it's not built into their process uh, right away. It takes some time for them to get up and going. Um, and you'll, you can see that with MedFlight. You can tell when the weather is bad because they'll be posting on Facebook. <laughs> so I see whether it's you know, bad out in the morning. If you see from my wall, it's full of pictures from the helicopter. Um, they need to build it into their process, make sure that it is something that they be very important that they take the time and care to feed that and encourage people to join. And they also um, need to find the right staff. So sometimes it's not the right staff managing it and they need to work through who is the best person that can do it. <coughs> so we have a strategic growth policy. So there is an official social media policy at UW Health and one of the parts of social media policy is that you can't create a new account. So we're um, very restricted. We're not the Bayo Clinic. We don't want everybody out there representing our brand yet. You know, um, this is what if people are comfortable with is that we have a little bit more control. So <coughs> if people want a new account, it has to be strategic. It has to fit with our strategic plan. They have to have support of their vice president and also the VP or the account manager of marketing. And they need to have a unique audience. So. Uh, we encourage people to try to, again, funnel stuff through one of our main three channels. So if you're trying to reach the general general public, you should go through to be Health, use that account, get used to providing regular updates to us, and then if you still feel like you have a, a really unique audience that you want to reach, then, then we can discuss having your own channel. 
Um, we work with them to set up the account and assist with branding. So again, this is, helps us control the branding a little bit. I know it's social media, you can't control your brand, but it does make us feel more comfortable when you make sure they're using the right logos and things like that. We provide training so we can help people um, if they need help uh, figuring out how to manage it, what tools to use, things like that. And then we also act as a backup administrator so that if you get locked out of Facebook, your password doesn't work, or the person leaves the organization, we always have that backup account that has access again, to security for us to make us feel better about losing access to folks. Um, and so then the last thing I just want to talk about is what kind of staff does it take to make um, a, a program on social media happen? One of our premier events for the Children's Hospital is a radiothon. It's a three-day live broadcast from the Children's Hospital. Um, and we cover it on social media in those three days. It's a big deal. It's a huge um, builder community in that group because everybody that's a fan of the Children's Hospital is a parent that's been there, spent time at the hospital. So we send one web editor every day, so that's three people one day. They're there, they cover it live, they uh, take snapshots on their phones or upload videos or um, photos from our photographer to Facebook. They write little um, blurbs about who it is that's talking on the radio, maybe link back to resources that we might have on our website related to that. We have a photographer who's awesome. He goes there and he takes pictures of these kids and they're so cute and their parents and it's really cool to be able to share those photos. Uh, we also get a lot of the parents that are on the radio who are fans of ours on Facebook, and so they'll come back and they'll share those photos and they'll say like how honored they were to be on the radio and we got to share their story. That's cool. We, uh, the radio station, provide us with the audio archives so we can link those up and share those on Facebook. We also curated it all in Storify, so we have all three days there, everything that happened, all the comments, Every um, thing that everybody said about radio comments was there. We did some flip cam videos ahead of time talking about some of the services that are non patient stories, so child life, pet pals. We did some videos, so we had those canned. When those people were on the radio, we were able to show that video of what actually pet pals is. We had some graphic work done. Some images, cover photos, before, during, and after, so we can tell people, you know, now's the time when we're on the air, you should go listen, and then or follow us along on the page. And then we have one person of me monitoring, uh, replying, and cross-posting to all the other platforms. So they, the editors, focused on Facebook because that was an easy central place where you can do like, everything: photos, videos, um, things. And then I would cross-post them to Twitter add them to Storify, um, post them to the other accounts as well, so we can share some of those with those costs. So that's what it took to do three days of Radiothon. And if you want to see everything that happened, I'll post there, set that URL, or go to UW.Kids slash Radiothon, you can see that. So, all right. That's all I have.